So let's look at a pipeline. So I will show you a pipeline which extracts multiple tables from uh, Oracle, does all the things which we mentioned, uh, merging, data drift handling, and everything, and, and writes it to your Snowflake database. The pipeline looks like a very simple. Oh, no, sorry. This is the wrong one. I was just kidding. The pipeline to do all the things I mentioned. That's right. This is all you need to do. Have an origin, have a destination, configure your origin, configure your destination, and everything is taken care of. So let's just look at the configurations for each of these components. So first we will look at our Oracle CDC client. So if I click on this client, I see the properties underneath here. And I can look at Oracle CDC properties. So we will look at the second tab here, which is Oracle CDC. And here you can see I have specified the schema name and the table name. So here I am reading only one table, but you can provide a pattern for tables as well. So if you put a percent, it will bring all the tables from this schema. Or if you want to say something like sales percent, then it will bring all the tables which starts with sales. And if you want to exclude some of the tables, then you can provide that information here. Um, next, you can look at initial change. So when you run this pipeline, where do you want to pick up the changes from? So from the last change, if this pipeline has been running periodically, every day, every hour, every four hours, then from the last change when this pipeline finished, it will pick up the new values. But there are other options here, so it's from date. So if you want to start reading from a particular date, you can specify that. Or if you want to read from a particular service change number, so you can specify that as well. And what kind of operations are you interested in? So it's insert, update, delete. And if you click on this, uh, you can see there is another option available as well. Select for updates. So if you want to pick up those records as well, then go ahead and add them. Next option we see here is uh, directory source. There are two options here, redo logs and online catalog. If your data structure is stable, you can use the online catalog, which is slightly faster. But if you use redo logs, you can listen to the changes to the structure as well. So depending upon your requirement, you can choose one or the other. And I think that's all the uh, configurations I did here. Uh, looking at the JDBC side of things, uh, you can specify the connect string you want to use to connect to your database. Uh, you can also create a connection and use it in multiple pipelines if you want. So, and then the username and password for the database you want to connect to. You can specify credential details here, so you can connect your data collector to AWS Secret Manager or to Azure Key Vault, and then extract those values from, uh, from there if you want. So we have already con seen the configurations for our Oracle CDC client. Uh, next is let's look at the configurations for our Snowflake destination. So here, if you see, um, I have this Snowflake connection information tab. Uh, you can specify on in which region your Snowflake uh, is hosted. Uh, account name, your username and password needs to be provided. And that is it for on this tab. Uh, on Snowflake uh, tab, you specify your warehouse name, your database name, your schema name and the table name. So you can hard code your table, but what we are going to do is we are going to use the, uh, the header property from the Oracle client. And each record will have a property which says oracle.cdc.table. So you don't have to specify table name yourself. It will pick it up from the record for which it, the data has been extracted from. And if you check this option here, which is data drift enabled, then any new fields appearing on the table will be automatically created in Snowflake for you. Do you want to uppercase schema and field names? Then choose this option. Uh, do you want to auto create tables? So if there is a tab data from a table which is not present in Snowflake, do you want to automatically create this table in Snowflake? If you yes. Uh, next, you can specify the um, staging details. Again, we have specified a tilde here. And on the data tab, you can specify this option here, which says 
processing CDC data, use merge, yes or no. So if you use this, then updates will be automatically updates, updated, inserts will be inserted, deletes will be deleted from your Snowflake table. And also you can choose this option if your table in Snowflake already has the primary key information, but if not, you can uh, uncheck this and specify the table name and the column which is the primary key. So it will use this column to insert, update, and delete the records. So everything looks good. Uh, when we pressed validation, we got a green signal here which says validation is successful. So we can see that everything is fine. We can run this pipeline now. Okay, so I'm starting this pipeline. This will take a few seconds. So let us see if there is any data here. So as we can see, there are no rows selected. I will set auto commit on so that I don't have to commit after each statement. So this should be on now and let us insert a record into this table now. So I have a script with some changes here. So I have this insert script. So let's paste the script and press enter. So one row has been inserted and committed. Again, if we do the select star, uh, we should see one row here. Yeah, we can see there's one row with column one as the primary key with value one, and then uh, column two as primary key and column one as text. So here you can see that our record has now reached the destination. And now what we can do is we can go into Snowflake and see if the table was created and record was inserted for us. So when I did a query a few seconds ago, it said the Kermit Tech table 01 does not exist. Now let us query again and see if the table was created and record was inserted. So yes, we can see that uh, when I requery it, I can see there's one column and column one and it has been inserted. Okay, so now let us go and insert another record and see what happens. So again, we go to our pipeline, which is running. If I go to the database and if I insert another record here, let's see what it says. So if I insert this new record now, it says uh, test 01, uh, table 1, insert value 2 and committed. In a few seconds, again, we will see that the record comes up here and will be inserted, and we will see in Snowflake when it is uh, available for us. There we go. We can see the second record available. If I go back to my Snowflake and if I run the query again, I will see number two available as well. Uh, now let's see if we update one of the records. Uh, so if I update... So if I see this now, uh, one row has been updated. If I go back to my pipeline, we should see three records uh, because there will be an entry for this record as well. So let's have a look and wait and see. Here, you can see that the record now has three inputs and three outputs. Let's go back to Snowflake, do a refresh here, where here you can see the change has happened already. So it's T double O. Okay, so let us insert one more record and then delete that record and see how it goes. Okay, so let us insert three from our Snowflake as well. So here I have inserted one more record and let's go back to our pipeline and we should see the fourth uh, change here. The real world, this would be much faster. So here we can see there are four inputs, four outputs. If I go back to my Snowflake and do this query again, I can see there is a record called three added as well. Now let's go and delete this record in Oracle and see if that gets deleted from Snowflake automatically as well. So here we can see that one record has been deleted from Oracle. In this pipeline, we should see five records uh, because delete is an event and will generate a record. And if we go to Snowflake, when we requery, we should not see the second record here, which is for three. Now, what I want to show is also the data drift capability. So if we change the structure of our table and if we add a new column and insert a record, then does it insert a record in Snowflake and does it make the changes? And also uh, we can look at alerts 
So how we can set up an alert on our pipeline to say if there is any data drift, send me a message on my Slack channel, okay? Alerts can be configured on the pipeline level. So I click on this canvas and I can click on rules and I go to data drift rule. So here I have already created the data drift rule. Uh, and if you want, we can have a look and see what I have configured here. So I am saying that whenever there is a change in the size. So in, in any of these tables, if a number of columns have changed, so if, whether it goes up or down, a uh, drift alert will be created and shown to us. And it will generate a text which says number of fields changed. Okay, so I have created this alert and enabled it. Also on the notification side, I have configured it to send a hook, webhook message to my Slack channel. And on my Slack channel, I have configured this text to be shown. So again, when the alert is created, we will see the message on my Slack channel and we will go and have a look at the message when the alert happens. We will go and add a new column to our database called as column three. After we have created the column, we will add a new record with some data and see how the structure changes automatically on Snowflake site. Okay, so we have changed the structure now. So if I go back here and insert this, uh, I can see that I have inserted it and commit has happened. So now we can see that a uh, new record has been extracted. So this is the change we did after we added this new column. If you go to the Snowflake, and now you can see there are two columns, but if I refresh it and requery it, we should three, see three columns. So here we have column one, column two, and column three. And also what we can see is that for the previous two rows where column three was not present, uh, nulls have been inserted and for the new record where we have provided this value, that value is available. Okay, so we can see that how data drift is automatically taken care of. A new record, a new column is added on to Snowflake. So here we can see this number of field changed alert created. And if I go to my Slack channel, I should see a new message received today uh, at 1456. And it says number of field change, the data alert was triggered for pipeline, so and so. And at what time and number of threshold record was one. So as soon as I saw one record with change, it has created this alert for you. So I hope you like the demo of the functionality to listen to changes on Oracle and replicate it in stream sets. So we saw the pipeline. We executed the pipeline, we saw the demo of inserts of records and how the fields were changed and we saw the notification on uh, our uh, Slack channel as well. So again, you can send the notification on email, you can send it on Slack channel with web books, you can send it to uh, some system like Ops Genie, which can then create an incident and assign it to someone who is on call to have and look at the changes has been done and if there needs to be an action taken uh, based on that. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, bye-bye.